My name's Matt Mahoney. I work with the Keystone Energy Efficiency Alliance, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much. This is a great forum. Um, unfortunately, I have not had the carrot cake. They scheduled the carrot cake for whenever I was supposed to talk, so please save me a piece of carrot cake. Uh, but anyways, I really appreciate this platform. I think it's a great, uh, a great convening, uh, great showing, and uh, happy to be invited to speak. And so I, I was asked to, uh, 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 to speak on the Sustainable Building Construction and Materials uh, 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 Forum or, or group. Uh, and uh, although I don't focus so much on the physical materials, the energy efficiency aspect is one that uh, I focus keenly on uh, and our organization, the Keystone Energy Efficiency Alliance, has. So appreciate the opportunity. So uh, before I do dive in, um, I wanted to share with you what I learned because I thought it was important to really dive into the details of the work that you had already done. So instead of me coming in as an outsider uh, and sort of just giving you a, not minding him. Uh, so instead of me coming in as an outsider, I wanted to do a deep dive into the work that you've already done and it is really impressive. Uh, I, I really appreciated the, uh, the thought and uh, leadership that was exhibited. I was just talking to Don before. Uh, about uh, thinking about things like life cycle, life cycle consumption and uh, uh, exploring what funding avenues and opportunities may exist uh, and, and focusing on key topics, uh, agriculture, renewable energy, items that are very specific to your region. So I think that's, that's a great way to uh, uh, start that process off. And uh, so the vision statement at the beginning there that you had, we envision wish that there was reduced energy consumption in building construction uh, uh, and use lifespan in Indiana, Indiana County, that's a huge lift. That is a, an enormous ask um, and something that is a great, you know, a great guiding principle to have. Uh, and, you know, in your reports, uh, uh, detailing out sort of the individual categories of where that's accomplishable, uh, especially starting with this innovation center, I think that is, as uh, was mentioned earlier this morning, that innovation center is a great convening uh, space and uh, there are models that exist uh, and there are good examples, but making it right for Indiana County, that's a big challenge. Uh, and I think you're doing, you know, this is, this is where it starts having those conversations and driving that forward, convening the stakeholders, finding out how it works. But that's, that's a, a great vision and one that I think energy efficiency and the energy efficiency economy in Pennsylvania really does fit. Um, eh. So again, there we go. Other way, this way, okay. Uh, so uh, from the report, uh, I pulled out a few things that I thought made a lot of sense, um, or at least that I wanted to, uh, that uh, aligned with sort of the, uh, the, uh, the work that Keystone Energy Efficiency Alliance does. So the lack of awareness regarding the cost savings of reducing energy consumption uh, for development across uh, all spaces, that is something that I see a lot in my everyday work. Uh, so we're a state-based organization, so I go to counties across uh, Western PA. I'm mostly focused in Western PA, but that lack of awareness, that's a tough one because I talk to a lot of businesses, a lot of uh, 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 oh, businesses that are selling energy efficiency equipment and energy efficiency services, as well as business owners, commercial property owners, uh, industrial uh, energy consumers. Uh, and whenever you tell them you have to spend money to save money, uh, that one sort of falls deaf, falls on deaf ears, and it's a really difficult sell for uh, people across. So that's that one's right on. Uh, and the examples, uh, showcasing those examples where uh, energy efficiency or sustainable building practices, uh, where those success stories are and highlighting them, that's a difficult, I've been working for the past year to do that throughout Western PA. So again, that's a really significant challenge that commend you for identifying and trying to work through. Um, and those recommendations, uh, the, these are sort of like, you know, what I've been working from on my playbook as well, trying to uh, uh, understand uh, the incentives, uh, incentive programs that exist. Uh, and I'll talk about some of those in a little bit. Developing partnerships, building relationships, that's, that's what it's all about to get real work uh, uh, done uh, and recognition mechanisms. So, uh, uh, so we can showcase those champions and make sure that not only ourselves know, but everybody outside of the, uh, the boundaries of counties uh, or states know about them. Uh, and then hosting workshops just like this, convening folks to talk about them. So 
Uh, what I did was I took a, a step further. Uh, there's uh, one resource that I wanted to pass along. Uh, the American Council for an Energy Efficiency Economy is a, a group out of Washington, D.C. They're a national group, uh, but they had a report uh, called Reaching Rural Communities with Energy Efficiency Programs. So very specific to rural communities. And I'm not going to reiterate what you've already talked about. It's a lot of the same concepts that were just discussed in the previous discussion. Uh, low population density makes it difficult. Uh, customer reluctance or lack of knowledge, getting that information out to farmers who aren't, who don't have the time to come out to a conference and or don't have um, maybe uh, uh, different forms of communication or access to that form of communication. Uh, uh, insufficient data. Uh, one of the topics last year was uh, a whole bunch of information on how to accumulate data on energy efficiency, but what if you don't have the platforms or the expertise or access to uh, technicians that have that type of uh, uh, work? So those are significant challenges that you know, are, are somewhat you know, similar uh, across different spaces. But there are methods to address those issues. So state policy being uh, one of them, uh, developing rural specific programming uh, that addresses uh, the issues and creates a solution that is for uh, the county instead of uh, 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 relying on somebody else uh, and, and developing it on your own or developing it on your own, not relying on others. Uh, and educating, uh, that is probably my f uh, primary um, uh, uh, recommendation. Education is key and paramount to building awareness and building understanding and building that community. So having that education that from this report, I highly recommend the, the, that you have a chance, if you have a chance, uh, to take a look at this report. Uh, and those recommendations, again, policies. Um, but I wanna shift gears now to what the energy efficiency economy is, uh, because the energy efficiency economy uh, saves money, improves resilience, and creates jobs. So, who is Kia? Has anybody ever heard of the Keystone Energy Efficiency Alliance before? I, I know you have. I know you have. Oh, you have? Uh, well, you have too. Have you? Back? Yeah? Okay, good. So we're a state-based uh, nonprofit trade association that focuses specifically on the energy efficiency economy. And so you might ask, oh, this way, sorry. So what, uh, uh, we were founded in 2006 um, when at the time there were state regulations or um, uh, uh, rate caps, as they call them, uh, that were coming up for expiration. And the um, Pennsylvania legislature was approached by a group of uh, businesses that said, hey, we want to see what the energy, of, uh, we want to see the state adopt what they call efficiency resource standards um, because we had at at that time didn't have those standards. So uh, a group of businesses came together, advocated and were successful uh, to grow or, or to define that legislation and help grow the energy efficiency industry. And so that it has grown uh, continuously uh, to include members uh, listed right here. Here are just some of our members, but we're a nearly 70 members strong Pennsylvania businesses uh, that we organize around policy to strengthen energy efficiency. So. Has anybody heard of Act 129? Yes, okay, good, a few. So Act 129 is probably the only program that I know of that is referred to by its actual legislative you know, name, Act 129. How interesting and intriguing is the word Act 129? Yeah. It's not. Uh, <laughs> it's really called the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Law, which again, bad job on the energy efficiency economy for not figuring out a, an interesting way of describing it. But we save money, create jobs. Uh, that's the bottom line there. And those jobs are growing. It's a growing economy or a growing industry. So as more states and more uh, 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 regions start to adopt uh, better energy efficiency standards, those jobs increase and it creates a very uh, a much more stable ground for job creation and economic development. So. Energy efficiency helps to uh, not uh, create those jobs, which helps uh, develop or, or strengthen the local economy uh, and, and drive um, uh, opportunities for uh, uh, workforce developments uh, and partnerships with other institutions. And you might be saying, what is this energy efficiency economy? Who is the workforce? 
And that is somewhat the beauty of uh, uh, the energy efficiency workforce is that, that it's not clearly defined. It includes engineers, it includes um, uh, 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 technicians, HVAC manufacturers, software developers. It's really a very diverse uh, grouping of uh, professionals from a wide variety of different uh, disciplines and trades that really help to uh, uh, save customers money on their energy bills. That's it. Uh, but it has blossomed into um, uh, 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 or uh, manufacturers uh, in sheet metal, for example, that manufacture high efficiency uh, equipment that reduces energy loss whenever using your HVAC system. And so the trade unions uh, see this as a, an opportunity and a growth opportunity for the next 10 years. Uh, and so what they're doing is they're training folks uh, uh, in HVAC uh, to be HVAC technicians uh, to manufacture the products, the, the, uh, the, the ventilation that goes, that's uh, right above the ceiling here. Uh, and the uh, sales folks that go out and sell the equipment uh, to folks. So it's, it's all that energy efficiency workforce is all part of that sort of economy just to save folks money. And in, in Pennsylvania, uh, we don't have the highest number, but we have about 68,000, which is much larger uh, than, um, uh, than other energy related industries. And so going back to where in your uh, in the uh, sustainability some or the sustainability task forces report um, showcasing those energy efficient or showcasing those champions and educating uh, folks about or educating uh, customers and educating the community about um, uh, who those folks are. That's what we do for energy efficiency. So we highlight businesses uh, uh, and others leading the way in energy efficiency. And we do this through multiple avenues. Uh, one of them uh, being we have uh, annual conferences. So um, at the beginning, uh, Mr. Krug had mentioned um, uh, convening uh, a conference. We do that each year for energy efficiency and we have a relatively good turnout. About 200 folks from governments, from uh, community organizations, from the business community come together to learn about what are the new trends in energy efficiency. Uh, and then we focus more on a specific uh, industry. So um, healthcare uh, is a really intense energy um, energy demanding industry uh, with unique needs uh, that you know uh, may they may not have sort of a, a space to convene and discuss and meet with businesses and or other uh, others to share best practices on how they've saved energy or address this certain issue uh, and so there are healthcare industries or healthcare facilities rather all over the place uh, and all. Uh, 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 can benefit from just sort of building that network and building that community so that relationships can build businesses or business can be uh, done and help grow that workforce. Another way we do this, I'm sorry for the weird uh, uh, language there, that's not me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, we publish a case study booklet and I, I have uh, a few copies uh, on, the, um, on the table over there. But that case study booklet is great for communicating what are the benefits at a very high level. What are uh, who are the what are the benefits of energy efficiency? Uh, so that um, identifying those stakeholder or those those champions and bringing this booklet to a state legislator has a really strong impact. They can see that there's economic development taking place in their district. Uh, they see that they're, that they're an employer. Uh, this one, for example, is Brubaker Farms where they installed an anaerobic digester, which basically accumulates the animal waste to, uh, and I'm sure uh, you're all much more knowledgeable on this than I am, but accumulates the waste, uh, the methane is captured, uh, and they um, have an on-site uh, combined heat and power plant. Uh, so they're reducing their energy costs. They also have uh, solar panels on uh, some of their roof because they have a lot of large structures, uh, but they're finding that this is a revenue stream for them. Uh, all based on, and at the same time, they're benefiting from the uh, uh, state programs such as Act 129, getting incent or getting rebates from installing those uh, uh, those technologies and receiving a bit of revenue in the meantime. Another one is uh, Duckmate Industries. They're another one of our members. The uh, the, the duct work that I was talking about, sheet metal workers uh, uh, are a um, a workforce of about 1,100 strong. Uh, and that uh, workforce is, is looking 10 years into the future of what opportunities exist for them to create more jobs 
uh, and create more business. So I would highly recommend the trades and the unions in the in the region be engaged in this conversation about energy efficiency and what that next workforce looks like or what the workforce in the next 10 years is looking like. And then uh, this is uh, uh, the sheet metal air rail uh, union and air conditioners union. Again, they're looking 10 years into the future of what, uh, what are customers looking for and um, uh, with state mandates and with state programming uh, that's available, these folks know about or are keeping their ear to it and uh, 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 making sure that they have the workforce ready so whenever those state policies come into place uh, that uh, they have folks ready, trained, uh, and uh, uh, can move forward with saving folks money. <laughs> So I have a quick video. Uh, it, this is uh, to stay on the focus of uh, tr uh, construction. So that's a, a quick example of how Kia showcases energy efficiency champions. We'll go out and find those folks that are doing something a little bit different, uh, that have a unique business model and they're capitalizing on an economy that's growing uh, and a workforce that needs training. And that's what we're here to, to elevate that message. They may not have the marketing team, uh, but I have the time to go out, uh, talk with them, uh, put together a video crew that will go out and showcase their work. Um, I'll skip past some of this uh, because I don't want to take up too much time. This is uh, for uh, the website. I had thought that it would be a good idea to list some of the resources. Chester County out in western or in eastern PA uh, includes some of the um, rebates and incentives that are available for customers at from commercial, industrial, agricultural, residential, um, but they have a nice sort of convening place. Sometimes it's difficult to navigate through some of the other bureaucracy uh, or other technical um, ways that things are, are uh, uh, I guess, provided by certain entities. Um, so uh, just having nice, a nice, easy to uh, uh, user interface uh, for accessing some of those benefits is helpful. And then some of these other grant programs and resources exist. DCED, uh, PenTap is a great uh, resource that I would recommend, and the Sustainable Energy Funds. Um, and as I mentioned, Act 129. If you're not taking advantage of Act 129, please uh, uh, visit the website at the end there. Uh, that's where we found our founding, uh, or where Kia had its founding. Um, but the current uh, phase ends May 31st of 2021. Uh, it's important that we get support behind it uh, to make sure that we continue that program because it's saved over 6.4 billion uh, uh, for customers and, and has created this 68,000 uh, uh, workforce uh, in Pennsylvania. One of the biggest opportunities that I wanted to discuss was CPACE. Uh, CPACE is a new financing mechanism that was just recently enabled by the state of Pennsylvania in 2018. And what it is, is a, uh, a financing mechanism for agricultural, commercial, and industrial properties to obtain low cost, long term financing for energy efficiency, water conservation, and renewable energy products. Uh, it's a program that's uh, uh, providing um, a, a mechanism, a financing mechanism that aligns more appropriately with the characteristics of some of these long-term investments. So an HVAC system, for example, is a really high cost. Uh, and typically you may get a 20-year loan to finance uh, a few hundred thousand dollars for a large commercial property owner, of course. Uh, so with this program, it provides a, 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 loan a loan mechanism that relies on the security of the county. So I'm um, not sure where the county commissioners are, but I hate to call you out. But this is a uh, program. There you are. Uh, this is a program that must be adopted by the uh, by the county commissioners uh, and utilizing and while utilizing the mechanisms, the tax uh, collection mechanisms that exist uh, within the county relies on those mechanisms to keep the cost down and relies on the security of the county. Now. That may seem really scary to a county official saying, I don't want to incur a whole bunch of risk of properties from big loans. Of, uh, that, 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 that doesn't sound like a, a liability I'm willing to incur. So what has happened, um, and I know I'm short on time, eh, eh, some market data. It's a really great program. It's grown over the past, uh, Pennsylvania is a little lagging. We're 34th in line uh, to get CPACE up and running. Uh, and there is a, 
uh, a process, but that process is overcome by program guidelines. And those program guidelines were developed over uh, uh, since the, the legislation was signed in 2018. Uh, so uh, this group, uh, Keystone Energy Efficiency Alliance, uh, the Sustainable Energy Fund, uh, Philadelphia Energy Authority, and the city of Pittsburgh convened 100 plus stakeholders across the state to develop program guidelines. Uh, and uh, once those program guidelines were put together, um, put together a um, public comment period uh, and developed what uh, others have called uh, CPACE in a box. And so CPACE in a box is designed for counties, uh, county administrators, uh, to uh, simply take off the bo uh, off the shelf and provide uh, the um, technical resources uh, that are that are uh, needed, such as the evaluation, the measurement, and verification to ensure energy savings and the characteristics of the loan match up with what the requirements of the legislation are, uh, and provide sort of that technical expertise. Uh, in addition to the the biggest question that I receive whenever talking about CPACE is, what about the risk of defaults or the liability that the county is incurring? And so uh, fortunately, this uh, our group came together, uh, hired legal consultants and consultants from across the country that are CPACE experts uh, to develop legal language that uh, not only counties are happy with, but more importantly, the financers, the lenders, big banks uh, and small regional banks are happy with. And it allows that risk to be avoided uh, and continue to uh, uh, allow loans, CPACE loans, to be uh, uh, rolled out. So it's, it's, a pro or it's a program that's really helped to develop county, or developed to help counties adopt the program to help economic development take place. And so with, with uh, the program administration piece, the, the Sustainable Energy Fund, which is based in Allentown, has really positioned themselves to be that state uh, program administrator uh, and has been adopted by five other counties already. Uh, Allegheny County here is the first on the, we on the west side of the state. Uh, the eastern side of the states, uh, they have four other counties, Philadelphia, Chester, Northampton, and Wayne County have just recently adopted the program. Um, but we're still waiting to see a program become operational. Uh, and that's where, you know, the rubber hits the road. It's easy to adopt a resolution that says, yay, we're doing good things, but uh, there needs to be um, an operational aspect. And that's where those program guidelines and the Sustainable Energy Fund uh, have come into play to, uh, uh, to be that um, entity, that trusted uh, third party uh, to, you know, reduce exposure for the county, uh, help reduce costs that may be incurred from putting, uh, uh, putting together a new program. Uh, and qualifying lenders and contractors and the other requirements that come along with uh, CPACE. So uh, the Sustainable Energy Fund really acts as a resource for county, uh, for county officials, the tax assessor, uh, uh, tax collector, uh, and county commissioners alike. So that's where I'll end it. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity and I hope we learned something and I'll happy to answer any questions. <laughs>